Now I would request uh, uh, Professor Shandar Ahmed, the, the Dean of School of Computational and Integral Integrative Sciences, JNU, to uh, deliver his address. Okay, thank you very much. So I'll start sharing my screen. So till you start your share screen, I'll just uh, say a few words that uh, yeah. Dr. Shandar has been very active in online learning and teaching, not even uh, recent time, but for a long time. He has a very uh, dedicated Moodle platforms he has uh, developed for students and teachers as well. Please, sir. Okay, thank you. I, I just realized my time is five minutes. So if you, uh, I'll try to finish it in five minutes. So first, I'll make two points. My interest in the online education was initially from the perspective of a data scientist. How we can use the artificial intelligence and deep learning techniques to improve the online experience that came from before lockdown. And that's where I think I'll uh, say a few words. Second point, before I start this presentation, I would like to make here is that although we are in the lockdown period and the COVID and all these things have necessitated the use of online or it has sped up the acceptance of online media for uh, uh, teaching, uh, we, we cannot make a policy or we cannot uh, uh, think that the policy, the whole paradigm of teaching will change from one medium to the other um, by, an, by an act which is not, it will not last for one year. I mean, uh, COVID, coronavirus uh, threat and lockdowns will be over in one year. Uh, so post COVID, I don't expect that we will be in the lockdown and we will be compelled to do online teaching just because we have experienced a coronavirus in the past. But the technology has its own uh, play and it has always transformed the experience between student and teacher. And from the times when people used to write on stones, people moved to write with the stationery using pen and pencil and then using other media and eventually we will also be able to uh, move to the new technologies. Third point I would like to make here is that the technologies have uh, their limitations has been pointed by some uh, users, but they have some advantages. So we have to keep a balance. Like we were talking a few years ago about self-driven cars and many things we were expecting that the AI uh, will, will take care of everything that human does. But now the industry realizes gradually that it is not the Drivers will not be replaced by computers. It will be the, drive, the machines or the AI tools will be, uh, will be suitable for, a tech, for something which is called augmentation. So the, the support devices. So uh, same way, I see online education, uh, role of the online education, not as a replacement for the current traditional system of education, but to augment it, to advance it, and to take it to the next level where teachers will integrate the online tools and technologies into their day-to-day -day activities that they do today. So this is in some sense inevitable, but in the other, uh, in the other it is also um, has limitations and teachers have to adapt to the new technologies, keeping in view what is the, what is the role of a teacher in the new scenario. When a lot of information is available online, what, what else a teacher can provide? And that is where teacher has to focus and that is uh, one of the key points there would be personalizing the teaching experience online and localizing the teacher learn teacher student relationships so the, there will always be a scope human uh, uh, requirement in the educational process will not be substituted by the online education but the role will be redefined their place will be redefined and their more the way the human experience has to be used and human interaction has to be used has to be changed and uh, people have to be aware of it so i briefly uh, go through some of the slides which I shared before lockdown with some of my audience and I have adapted them for today's presentation. So future of classroom, what is the future of classroom in, the, in this age of uh, technology? And uh, from the perspective of uh, artificial intelligence it was, but it is applicable for the current scenario. So not only the classroom is transforming, but also the, the way we conduct research 
in any field, in science, in the social sciences or in languages, this has to be uh, take cognizance of the evolving technologies. A quick look at the industry. Academia is an industry. And you see that in just in, in just our country in India, an urban India is uh, per household spending on education is 22,000 rupees per family. We are talking of the urban India, which includes a lot of poor people and a lot of uh, um, people who cannot afford uh, very high, even big houses. But on the average, an, uh, an average household is spending up to 20,000. This data is from 2015. This may, number may, has even, may have even increased. So academia is a big industry. And um, trying to reach the audience, the supply and demand scenario is the uh, online education moves this massively of open online resources, courses that people are using has the use has constantly started increasing. And you will see in the middle of this uh, uh, the central panel of this uh, slide that India is number two user. Indian students are, uh, are at the number two in taking uh, online courses. 27.7% of online courses were taken by United States and 8.8 were taken by India, Indian students. And this is the data even before the coronavirus. So the online education is there to stay, not because of the coronavirus, but because of the needs of technology and need of reaching out to a large number of people. So I skipped uh, other data because I don't have so much of time to go through this. But the implications are that you may have, the question arises is, can you have, for instance, in the future robots, as well, so teacher will be completely replaced. So, um, and, this is a teacher in a virtual class where you have hundreds of students attending a class and the teacher will be present. So it is not just a Zoom meeting kind of thing, but in a real, real time, when uh, social, it is not compelled by social distancing, but a need to connect to people far off where expertise is localized, where experts are not available everywhere, but uh, the uh, students are located in different parts of the world and an expert has to connect with all of them. So this is a kind of scenario which is uh, possible. So this is another example where an experiment has to be done and uh, the uh, sophisticated tools and in a scientific experiment may not be available in, in every laboratory. So there is a need to access the equipment from distance, uh, distant places. Can a person sitting in a village who has no access uh, to the big uh, computers or big um, sequencing devices or biological or medical devices, can he just sit there and simulate and do an experiment? So that is where technology is moving and technology is entering. So I'll, I listed these three aspects of research, which is uh, going, to be, going to be replaced. This is computer simulation versus experiments. Instead of doing experiments, you can simulate your experiment on the computer. You can remote access your machines. And there are tools already for doing both of these things, LabVIEW, TeamViewer, are for this. And then third thing, which is relevant for the humanities, social sciences is uh, the replacement of field surveys. Do we always have to go into the field to kind of conduct our survey or can we do some research by sitting and doing the, using digital media and uh, in that context, social media replaces the field surveys. So I just, uh, as a quick example, I took this uh, gender research and there are a number of researches which have been conducted by just analyzing the social networking data, which were earlier not possible without going into the field, conducting surveys and uh, carrying out questionnaires. So automatic detection of cyber bullying in social media context. You don't have to go a step out of your home to conduct this research. And a lot of good research has come out of it. Distrib distributional semantics approaches to detect intent, intent, detecting intent. Just so we write software, we apply machine learning, AI, uh, artificial intelligence techniques to detect sexual assaults con through conversations and to even alert uh, uh, law enforcement agencies before a crime happens. So these are some other uh, studies which have done, been done, which were earlier supposed to be done by going into the field, asking questions. They can be now conducted by just analyzing the conversations that take place in the social media. So these are some of those examples, biases detected in the web analytics and so on. So uh, I can't go into each of them. I just uh, conclude with a small poem where uh, it is a tribute to kind of data science that enters into this field. And this is from one of my books that I'm currently compiling, a book called Musings of a Data Scientist, a, po a poetry from a data scientist perspective. And this is making brain shallow and deep. Machines are learning, letting men sleep. Without complex equations or laws, making use of errors and flaws, regressive, divisive, and classifying. These are the terms we use in artificial intelligence. 
regressive, divisive, and classifying only in AI are so critical. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing uh, this wonderful uh, data and uh, knowledge with us. Uh, and uh, thank you for your all support to this conference. Uh, now, I